Hey what's going on guys, Kyle here today. So today's video we're going to be talking about 1440p gaming because a lot of people ask me on a week to week basis what performance and FPS I actually get out of a 970 and of course dual 970 in SLI. you got to think now guys, it's quite an exciting time now to be a PC gamer with all these monitors that are coming out. I've already come out, we've got access to 1440p, we've got 4K, we've got G-Sync monitors, free sync monitors, we've got ultra wide, 16x9, we even have a curved screen monitors coming out now. So it's a very exciting time for the first time in a long time you guys might be thinking about dropping that 1080p monitor and going out and buying one of these high res monitors such as the 1440p but worried if your current gaming setup with say a 970 or equivalent card actually in your system and you're worried that you haven't got the horsepower or power to actually push decent fps and performance at 1440p so before we get into them all important FPS benchmarks with the 970s in single and dual configuration, I must take note that one thing I quite notice quite a lot when getting asked about 4040p is a lot of people feel they have to spend a lot of money on such 980 Ti to achieve good gaming experience and high FPS at 1440p. Now in reality this is correct because of course a 980 Ti with 6GB of VRAM will happily max everything out on ultra high settings at 1440p and give you very high FPS while gaming. So this is truthfully, but of course we can't always go out and buy that because they're quite expensive and even myself I'm guessing you guys realise we can't spend that kind of money sometimes on a single graphics card. So of course we want to game so we opt for something cheaper such as the 970 or equivalent AMD card to give us that gaming experience. Now I've been gaming at 1440p for quite a long time ever since the Asus Swift come out in August 2014. I bought two 970s in SLI in September 14 because of course 980 hours now then I can't afford to buy a 980 because it's like 550, 600 pounds and two 970s at that time was cheaper and giving more performance so I opted for that. So I got quite understanding what actually requires to run 1440p. Now the first thing I must note guys is that if you run a 2GB card it's just going to be a no-no for 1440p and there's no point even attempting and you will definitely have to upgrade that graphics card because a lot of games now are pushing my graphics cards while over that 3GB barrier on Ultra at 1440p so definitely a 4GB card minimum I would recommend if you want a game at 1440p. Now of course the all important FPS benchmarks. Now before we get into that uh, FPS is actually depending on a lot of people because I myself like to actually game on first person shooter games such as Battlefield, Battlefront, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, uh, Call of Duty, them kind of first person shooter games I like to have that 120 plus FPS so me personally I will sacrifice some things like AMA, SA, turn a few things down from ultra to high to get achieve them settings if I have to and maintain the 120 FPS. You guys might be happy with 60 FPS or even 30 FPS you don't know but if I'm playing something like a game like GTA 5 or a single player game then I like 60 FPS higher that's also a very dual experience for myself. You guys, like I said, might like 30 FPS console performance as long as you get that ultra set in crystal clear 1440p detail. Everybody's different, so of course these benchmarks will be varies between person to person what they actually think of it. But anyway, let's get in there and see what these 970s can do. So first up to start things off, Star Wars Battlefront 3. This is probably one of the best looking FPS multiplayer games, so it's a good game to test how good a 970 is overclocked in SLI and single. So first of all guys, a single 970 overclock can achieve an average of 73 FPS. This is what I saw mostly when I was running around fighting. 82 FPS was maximum. This is when I went inside buildings or just corridors, stuff like that. If I went outside and was under heavy combat, attack shooting, it was grenades going off, Boba Fat doing whatever he wants to do, it dropped down to about 61 FPS. So it's not too bad actually. If you're a 60 FPS gamer and you want that smooth experience, at least you know you can have a smooth experience. But me personally, it's an FPS title online, you want to achieve at least 100 FPS personally. Now look at two 970s in SLI, you can see an average was shot up. To about 95 to 100, this is what it consistently saw. It dropped down to about 83 again under heavy combat, grenades going off, attacks shooting at it, etc. Inside corridors or just inside anything, it went to about 113. So, overall, good performance, but this is on ultra. So, you've actually dropped things down to high, and to be honest, the graphics don't even look that different if you put on high compared to ultra you can actually achieve about 20 fps average more on both single and of course dual setups gta 5 and i gotta say guys it's one of my favorite games of the year to play and that little single 970 of an overclock at 1440p on ultra with msa times 2 does a fantastic job of holding this game 
90% of the time about 58 average FPS what is fantastic to achieve that 60 FPS smooth performance what you want to achieve now it did unfortunately drop down to about 43 FPS and high detail areas like the forest where you got trees and grass to render and process and again it shot up to about 77 FPS in areas like the desert is less detail but average was 58 to 60 and i gotta say for a single 970 maxed out that is pretty damn good and i'd probably even say if you want to drop them settings down a little bit you can squeeze more fps out of it that's what i'll probably do now of course dual 970s give you a bit of a different story with the same performance as 980 ti i must add give or take average 85 fps fantastic experience that's going to give you 100 plus in areas like the desert and even 71 in them forest areas with trees and grass and again if you want to squeeze more you could lower them settings down from ultra to high and get a few more fps out but overall 970 does a fantastic job in gta 5 at 1440p so next up fallout 4 this is probably one of my favorite games to play I didn't get a lot of chance to play it but when i do i just love this game again we're testing ultra settings with fxa this time single 970 eight o'clock don't do a too bad job but not the best at 1440p average score 50 fps below that 60 fps smooth experience minimum recorder was 36 a lot of times though to be honest a lot guys a kid they did get jumping from 50 sub 40 depending on area you're in so a lot of times you're gonna feel like you're on console fps experience but with the pc graphics not too bad it is a role-playing game after all but if you want definitely more fps you probably have to lower some of the settings to get more out of it SLI 970s, not the best SLI profile to be honest with you, but it did manage to keep it below, uh, above 60 FPS, an average of 73. A lot of times though, to be honest, it was in the mid 60s, so not too bad, but again, a single 980 or something would be better here because it's only using about 60% of the cards, not the best SLI profile. But overall, single 970, you're gonna get console-like experience unless you lower the graphics. So last up, Far Cry 4, I thought I'd put this one in guys, don't really play it at all, but it's quite good uh, demanding test for 970. Again, on ultra settings, average score, 40 FPS, dropped down to 35 million, so you're going to get that console-like feel, but PC graphics, 63 FPS maximum, that was in buildings mainly, but on average it was about 40 FPS, it literally stood there all the time, it's not too bad, so definitely want to drop the uh, detail down if you want to achieve that nice smooth 60 FPS. If not, you like, of course, console game, it is an FPS game, but of course, uh, single player ones doesn't really matter, so it's up to you on that. Dual 970s did a better job, decent FI profile, did keep it over 60 FPS, average was literally about 70 FPS all the time, again in buildings 93, but like I say guys, depending what kind of person you are here, I would personally like to game at 60 FPS minimum in this game, but 35 FPS, you know, if you're happy with that, then you definitely can enjoy PC gaming at 1440p on Far Cry 4 with a 970. <laughs> So there we have it guys, as simple as that. A few benchmarks today just to show you what kind of FPS you'd actually expect to see using a single 970. Of course, dual 970 is an SLI, which is about the same performance as a 980 Ti. So what do you guys think? Would you actually be prepared to actually game at these FPS and upgrade using a 970 or similar card at 1440p? Are you guys still happy with your 1080p monitor and waiting to actually get the money to buy a better graphics card before upgrading to 1440p? Let me know in the comment section what you think. But anyway guys, thank Thanks for having uh, watched this video today. I've been really appreciate it. Please leave a thumbs up. It actually makes me keep motivating to make videos when I see you liking the videos. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you're actually watching this and you're not subscribed, then hit that sub button, of course, for future content just like this or whatever other tech videos I decide to make. But anyway, guys, like I said, that's it for today. So I'm going to finish editing this video, play some games, and of course, go to bed. So I guess I'll uh, catch you next time. See ya.